I watched that beautiful performance just now and it moved me deeply. It's a reminder of everything Native people enjoy and employ, sacred traditions, culture, passed down over thousands of thousands of years, long before there was the United States and Native communities flourished on this land. They practiced democratic government before we ever heard of it, developed advanced agriculture, contributed science, art, and culture. But eventually, the United States was established and began expanding, entering treaties with sovereign tribal nations. <clears throat> but as time moved on, respect for, so for tribal sovereignty evaporated, was shattered, pushing Native people off their homelands, denying denying their humanity and their rights, targeting children to cut their connection to their ancestors and their inheritance and their heritage. At first, in the 1800s, the effort was voluntary, asking tribes to sell their children, to send their children away to vocational schools. But then, then the federal government mandated, mandated the removal of children from their families and tribes launching what's called the Federal Indian Boarding School era, era. Over 150 years span, 150 years from the early 1800s to, 1870, to 1970, one of the most horrific chapters in American history. You should be ashamed, a chapter that most Americans don't know about. The vast majority don't even know about it. I was, I was at my hotel today. I told the, people, the hotel staff that were leaving. I said, where are you going? I told them. And so, what are you doing? I told them. They said there are natives here. They said, I never knew that. I never knew that. Think of how many people don't know. As President, I believe it's important that we do know. You know, generations of Native children stolen, taken away to places they didn't know, with people they never met, who spoke a language they had never heard, Native communities silenced. Their children's laughter and play were gone. Children would arrive at schools, their clothes taken off, their hair that they were told was sacred was chopped off, their names literally erased, replaced by a number or an English name. One survivor later recounted her days when taken away. She said, quote, my mother, standing on that sidewalk as we loaded into a green bus, I can see the image of my mom burned into my mind and my heart where she was crying. Another survivor described what it was like at the boarding school. I quote, when I would talk my tribal language, I would get hit. I lost my tongue. They beat me every day. Children abused emotionally, physically, and sexually abused forced into hard labor, some put up for adoption without the consent of their birth parents, some left for dead in unmarked graves. And for those who did return home, they were wounded in body and in spirit. Trauma and shame passed down through generations. The policy continued even after the Civil Rights Act, which got me involved in politics as a young man, even after the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. It continued. All told, hundreds and hundreds of federal Indian boarding schools across the country, tens of thousands of Native children entered the system. Nearly 1,000 documented Native child deaths, though the real number is likely to be much, much higher. Lost generations culture and language, lost trust. It's horribly, horribly wrong. It's a sin on our soul. I'd like to ask, with your permission, for a moment of silence to remember those lost and the generations living with that trauma. After 150 years, the United States government eventually stopped the program. But the federal government has never, never formally apologized for what happened. 
until today. I formally apologize as President of the United States of America for what we did. I formally apologize. And it's long overdue at the tribal school, at a tribal school in Arizona, a community full of tradition and culture, and joined by survivors and descendants to do just that. Apologize, apologize, apologize. Rewrite the history book correctly. I have a solemn responsibility to be the first president to formally apologize to the Native peoples. Native Americans, Native Hawaiians, Native Alaskans, and Federal Indian boarding schools. It's long, long, long overdue. Quite frankly, there's no excuse that this apology took 50 years to make.